Relationships 102. Johnny and Yusuf from Propen Fitness are joining us again. Relationships 101 went down really well. If you haven't watched it, link will be in the description and video guide will make it appear around That's our heads. That, that clip of you saying it doesn't have to be better, it just has to be different is from. It is indeed, man. That family Why guy. Men cheat, as explained by Family Guy. Man. Very BuzzFeedy video. Oh, crazy well. BuzzFeedy. But went, went down well. So today we are going to do Relationships 102. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about how to cultivate a good relationship, some principles that you can stick to. I've got some comments to make about what seeing someone means, which is a no man's land of <coughs> emotional distress. So Relationships 102. Where did we leave off last time? We we talked about the initial phase of like having met, met someone to beginning or something some something slightly more exclusive. Yeah, yeah. I think I want to. I'm going to delve straight in. I don't know whether you two, because both of you are kind of like serial monogamists, right? Ish, like yeah. for, at least in Ish. recent recent <clears throat> memory, as certainly well. recently, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think. There's, for anyone who's listening who's been used to being single and hasn't been in like a proper, proper relationship for a little while, you will know the no man's land of emotional turmoil that is seeing somebody. Mm. And I think that that it is just an absolute barren wasteland of nothingless, meaningless. Like it is one step above having sex with being friends with benefits mm. and everything below being exclusive. There's a bit of commitment, but no reward. So I think... Anyone who's seeing somebody, unless it's mutually and absolutely transparently explained to both parties, just needs to give up on it now. You need to either step forward into a relationship or step mm. back into having sex with other people as well. And I'll explain why. What are you so, laughing at? Um, just, you reminded me about the friends with benefits thing. And I, David was talking about this too, that we, I think if you're just nice to someone who is a friends with benefit, a friend with a benefit, yeah. their assumption, because they're on the, the defensive, is like, whoa, whoa, don't fall in love with me now. And you're like, all right, let us head. Like, I'm not going to fall. I'm, I'm just, just being nice. Yeah. But it's like the instant fear that the other person is becoming too attached. Yeah. So I think the reason that I don't like seeing somebody, and I can speak from personal experience on this, what you think you're getting when you start seeing somebody is all of the benefits of having a regular girlfriend or boyfriend with none of the, it's down the far side, make you drink. You're going to have to reach Um, with none of the disadvantages with none of the um, justification for them to ask you where you've been or who you've been messaging or whatever. You want to be able to have your cake and eat it. And I think that people believe that that's friends with benefits. No, this is seeing seeing someone. someone. Um, I think friends with benefits, like, it just so quickly turns into seeing someone now. And the the way that you pull that back, the only way that you can do that and the only way you can fix it is by being completely transparent about exactly what's going on and continuing to do it all the time. But what happens so A much... A long-term friends with benefits, like truly situation, has to either be two psychopaths or two really busy people that just have very... Utilitarian, very much- transactional relationship. Mm. Like I need something from you, you need something from me. A little bit of companionship, it's like lots bi- of sex. It's bilateral prostitution where the, the feet cancels each other out and so they're both at break even again. Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing at bilateral prostitution. It was just the way you d- that you delivered it from a place of anger and then you looked at me like... <laughs> anger. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think seeing someone is just... it's a. A, a terrible position so you, to be in. You're repeatedly having sex with the same person. Yeah. Are there? It's it's does not anything else happen. No. So it's seeing someone is being boyfriend or girlfriend with a partner without being the title, without the label. Right. Okay. okay. It's what people believe and what that they just think feels pedantry. One I want to me. Like I don't understand where. Well, it's a precursor, isn't it? It's it's where both parties are too afraid to or to or, say. Yeah, or they feel. So like you're li- you're. Spending a bit of time with each other's houses, maybe mm-hmm. go for You'd food. probably spend spend a lot of time with each other. But it's not. I we are boyfriend and girlfriend. And That's it. I mean, the universal language, the universal currency of this is, is it Facebook official? Yeah. Like if it's not listed on Facebook. It's a great system. Have you ever listed a relationship on Facebook? Yeah, I have. Really? I mean, why not? Like Jonathan is seeing... It's on my profile now. 
Exactly. That's <laughs> exactly there you right. go. I mean, that's what you think. That was a hiccup of shock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the diaphragm. <laughs> what, why? Why? Why not? You don't like personal information being out in the open world. Absolutely not. Especially not a relationship. I just think that's nobody's business. Interesting. But well, it's my business and the other person's business. Yeah. And I suppose your business, Chris's business. To a degree. Is it I, don't, I don't make any money off your relationship. I'm not sure it's my business at all. How do you know that you don't? In fact, yes, you do. Yeah, you're right, I do. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my club nights, Becca. Mm. So, um, yeah, basically I think people believe that seeing someone is this wonderful best of both worlds scenario where you're going to get companionship but also freedom. And what actually mm. inevitably ends up happening is it's a game of emotional chicken with the other person. Thinly sliced. Thinly sliced chicken in a pressure cooker. And what, what you're playing, the way that the game of chicken works is whoever gets feelings first loses. And it just ends up, it's a countdown clock to someone doing something which crosses a boundary that was never defined. Mm. Like if you sleep with someone else and you haven't identified that you're supposed to be exclusive with someone because seeing someone is in this beautiful... Yeah, then, then there's a slimy get out card for the other person being like, oh, well, we never said it, we were exclusive, so yeah. actually I'm at free range to do whatever. And it's like, mm, you know, there is a, there's kind of a code of honour mm-hmm. where, th- yes, there, it hasn't been discussed yet, there's an implication, it's, it's a grey area. You don't so cross it, but shit will get off the pot, really. Is the advice for that, isn't it? <laughs> I just think... To, Stop being scared and just... Yeah. But one of the problems like, is... You're going to sell them at seven quid an hour. <laughs> sell them at seven them sixty. Seven, yeah. I think so, we need the clip of that as well. <laughs> yeah, Dean will make sure that that goes in. So, I think that basically you need to... You need to make a commitment with regards to this sort of stuff because you think you're getting the best of both worlds and you're actually not. You're not getting anything of either mm. because <clears throat> certainly for me, when I'm in situations like that, if I do start chatting to someone else or start spending time with another girl or whatever, I immediately get these horrible pangs of guilt about doing something. And then the thought loop of, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, I should be allowed to do this. Well, actually no, because you, and I know in my heart of hearts that my deepest virtue says no. The fact that that thought loop is going on yeah. is the internal yeah. struggle. That in itself. Like and the other thing is you go, well, you never know what the other person's doing. Like, well, do you know, they haven't mm. said, she hasn't said that she's not going to do it. So you just keep on going back it's and forth. It's why there should just be contracts in place the whole time. Contractually <laughs> obligations. Ma- but I mean, you've, you've not got a contract with Becca. I don't, but... Well, no. No, I don't. Well, as far as you know. As far but- as I'm willing to admit, I don't have a contract. <laughs> so I remember she, the conclusion... She contracted you in? <laughs> I've contracted her in. Have you? No. The conclusion of Relationships 101, or one of them, was that many of these gaps that we see that cause suffering are from lack of clear communication. 100%. Mm. And in this case, it's exactly the same. 100%. But nobody can socially acceptably say like, oh, I'm too afraid of commitment to give us a label yet or I'm I'm still not sure if I like you fully so I don't want to jump in. Because saying that is a social faux pas in itself. Mm-hmm. So then there needs to be a way to either tactfully... So if both people express separately that. discuss it with a solicitor, mm-hmm. <laughs> contract support together. Get a bursa. Yeah, get well, a bursa involved. So th- this is why Tinder... Manages the finances of the school. <laughs> so the, like the, the idea behind Tinder could work at the next level as well, which is that both people put in a blind vote... They don't get to see what the other so person like steal, is like share or steal. Share, or yeah, so it's, exa- it's, it is split or, it's a prisoner's it's, dilemma, though. Because you, you described it as chicken, which is exactly what it is. Like, it, it is game theory. It's the mm-hmm. prisoner's dilemma. Like, if both people split, <coughs> then fine. If one person splits, the other person steals. That's one person cheating and the other person... Mm-hmm. Well, not cheating, but... Mm-hmm. And if they both, both cheat, then fine. Yeah. I, I just think it... It's such... Like, as I see it all the time, right? Like, I've, I've got access to 200 under 21 year old guys and 200 under 21 year old girls and my car can go 100 miles an hour <laughs> <laughs> I know the words a... to candle in the wind <laughs> well I won an egg and spoon race once that is a long joke that I'm not prepared I'm not prepared to get into today <laughs> no let's explain so no, back no. in 1997 <laughs> yeah. let me tell you about the old old wooden trees so just uh, outdoing each other with rubbish I, I have a framework for this discussion. Fantastic. Do you want to hear the framework? Yeah. Because I think it would help frame all of this. Mm-hmm. Great. Love a framework. Question one mm-hmm. is, should we be in a relationship at all? Who are you asking? Me? This is the beginning of the framework, Chris. It's a rhetorical question. So relationship versus being single. And then 
once you've decided that I feel like I'm going to put across as a pretty strong argument that you should be in a relationship, then who should you be in a relationship with? Mm -hmm. And then, as I hear you sort of about to ask, how do I find the person that I'm about to get in a relationship with? (laughs) Exactly. And then once I've found that person, well, the next question is... When do I get them? Not when, that's covered in in how. (laughs) Um, The next question is, once you're in a relationship with that person, how do you keep that person in a relationship with you? Without using, Ball and chain. without using stuff like that. Or <laughs> strong arm and strong, well, it's, like it's good the, middle, isn't it? the, the top of the head <laughs> yeah. and circular motion. Yeah. Like exactly like that. Just like that. Have you, been, like you that. must have seen my notes. It, oh, sorry, I was ruined. Oh, ruined. Cheating. <laughs> okay, so I think we've covered, I think we've covered most of the ones up to how do you keep a relationship? I don't think we have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think let's move it's forward. Interesting point, Chris. Let's so, move forward into relationships because I, I, I want to do a whole right. one on single single. I, I want to make one point. Yeah, which is that I think where a lot of people get trapped. <laughs> you, look, you look immediately bored. <laughs> just that's like, just my face. You just went. That's my that's my resting bitch face. Second hand car market. That's what it's like. You were talking about this the other day. We mm-hmm. discussed this in the big dicks group, didn't we? We did. So, I think people. So this is, this is under, should I be in a relationship or not? So let's say you're 25, for example, and you're thinking, I'm moving towards 30 quicker than I feel comfortable with. I'm not really happy with how my life is. I feel like maybe I should be getting a relationship. Maybe a few of your friends are, one of them's engaged. A couple of them are maybe having kids or something like that. I've had to go to 15 weddings in the last month. Yeah, Family, me too. <laughs> um, and so you, you, there's this decision of like, should I be single or not? And I think there's a point at which, if you're not careful all of the people who are people that you would actually want to be in a relationship with are in relationships. And then what you're left with is dregs. Yeah. So sort of. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, which well, is I mean, like when you're buying a secondhand car, you don't know whether it's a great value steal or whether it's two cars that have been welded together and they're giving you shit certificates. So, and, well, because what, what you've got there is there is a statistical distribution of ages that people typically pair off at mm-hmm. <clears throat> as you grow older that total population diminishes, but also the average quality also drops. Yeah. And top, so, you presume that the cream gets taken off the top first. Cream gets both, taken off the top. For, for both men <coughs> and women. Which brings the mean down. Mm. And so, yes, there still are high quality people on both ends of that, that now skewed bell curve, but you, oh, the tougher, there's fewer, fewer per sample size, right? Mm. Fewer per sample size and smaller sample size. So which means the price is high, which means you've got to be more attractive and better in every way to access those people. The only way that this works, and you put it in the group, and I'm going to use my same defense against this, is Go someone who's 30 years old and single. Hit me. I should be, by all means, shitting myself that I don't have a girlfriend. But that's you presuming that I'm looking at girls that are my age. You, so, so I agree. But it's, so it's, like, it's like if I said to you, there are the there is a range of cars that you can buy. Mm-hmm. So let's say cars that were made in a ten year period, mm-hmm. and you can buy from them whenever you want. But everyone else is also trying to buy from that pool of cars, and some of them may come back in the market. Some of them may be mm-hmm. kept in a garage, and yeah, you can wait until the ones that are ten years younger are coming up to thirty mm-hmm. if you want to, or you can secure a position, but you sit outside of this entire equation for a whole host of reasons that we're not going to get into in the podcast. <clears throat> but for the average person who doesn't have an Instagram funnel. <laughs> Instagram <laughs> funnel. These things need... And if you want to know what the Instagram Tap funnel is... <laughs> that, if you want to know what that is, send us a message. Um, so I think, so, I, think another, I think another part to... Before you move on from that. Okay. I thought, I thought, we, I thought we covered this. You, you've opened up a, a new a, a new doorway, I enjoy. So, the, the age difference. So age differential is a big deal because... So we're going to have to get that picture up. Um, I'm going to send it to Video Guy Team to put this up. No, so it's a graph. You always want to put porn in. <laughs> always. It's, so it's a, a data plot of the average preference of ages that men uh, prefer, that, that people prefer in the opposite sex um, as defined by Match.com. Mm-hmm. And it's depressing because for women, the age that they prefer in men is typically a year or two older than them, maybe up to five, seven it then, years older It then flips them. after a little while though, right? Flips at the age of like 50 and 60. They want someone who's the same age and then slightly younger. Mm-hmm. For men, 
the age that they prefer in the vertical line, regardless of their age is always 21 21 and when, when i think when you're 40 you're into like the slightly older woman at 24 and then it goes back to 21 yeah. it goes back <laughs> It's like because that, that's it's like, like you relapse at fifty back to one your twenty one year old. Enough, enough's enough. I need to start lacking up. Actually, fuck this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Tried yeah. a twenty four year old. I'm going for a twenty one year old. But I mean, there is there's probably a there's a biological explanation for that. So it, I'm gonna I'm also gonna throw a spanner in the works with that. If I look at a twenty one year old girl now, mm. I think to myself, emotionally unstable. I I think oh she'll be boring to hang around with it, and like that's just because. Sorry, all twenty one year old girls who are out there, you are lovely. But you're going to be more lovely in about three lovely, years' time. but boring and emotionally unstable. The, no. That, that, that's, <laughs> you're just going to be less emotionally unstable and less boring. In... I think when I was 21, I didn't find 21-year-old girls boring, but I think as you have less and less in common as you get older... Yeah, that's because you're looking at 17-year-old girls. Careful, don't wind it back too much. I said don't wind it back too much. Half your age plus seven. That's the formula. That's the rule, Scoby, isn't it? Scoby formula. Um, so, yeah, I think... I, I, I totally do get that, and I think that... The elephant in the room when you're talking about guys versus girls is that women's biological clocks tick yep. a lot more harshly than men's do. So the men are seeking fertility, ultimately, whereas for women, they're seeking... Isn't it like 18? The roughly, uh, Like the peak, theoretical peak of fertility. In... Is that correct? Yeah. You, Which you is... have your best chance of being pregnant at 18 and it gets more difficult thereafter. I think so, yeah. Wow. Which means so... that, if assuming that's true... Men are just going to find eighteen year old, which is I suppose twenty one's close enough, isn't it? Eighteen looks too much like too much like a child for me. Well, I think I'm, I'm, you're I'm talking not, evolutionarily, I'm not saying, right? Hey, I'm saying I'm not saying like oh, I love eighteen year old girls. <laughs> a good eighteen. I'm saying statistically speaking, yeah, with that in mind, percentile. that's yeah. how you're programmed, right? To see, which I think is is insidious. To be honest, that that's we're, we're programmed like that. Why? Why is someone it should undo it all? Yeah, they well, should change it. It's just unfair, isn't it? <laughs> the There's so much about Even, our biology that's unfair. Yeah. Just, but like, it wasn't. It wasn't designed to... for this time or place, was it? That's why. Well, True. So we should change it. Yeah, they should. I what's it be? I bet, all Z- time. I bet Zuckerberg could get in there. Yeah. Even with that headset thing, we could do something. Yeah. Like that, couldn't yeah. We? yeah. Fine. <laughs> Moving on. So, business versus a job is like relationship versus being single. So, or an asset versus an expense. So people think that being in a relationship is job versus business. You must have been looking at my notes. No. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway. Okay. Um, we all watch far too much of the same stuff. Yeah. We? Too much Big Brother and Love Island and we're all, always watching it. Um, so <laughs> All round at mine with a pink blanket. <laughs> we, we cuddled up together. <laughs> yeah. Ice cream. Just watching. That's what we've just been doing before. Face mask. Record. Oh, yeah. yeah. The cucumber. Cucumber. Um, How do you watch so it through the cucumber? <laughs> people cut a whole middle of time. <laughs> people think that a, that a relationship is a, a liability. Shall I wait? No, no, no. We're going to be serious. But that's, that's like when a teacher in a class is like, all right, well, I'm guessing by your chattering that you finished you the test paper now. <laughs> and you don't want a break. <laughs> the bell is for me, not for you. Come on. Um, so, job, you get a salary and a pension. But at the end of a week or a month, like, you have no residual value in that, which is the same as serially dating people so you build up a little bit of equity in something and then it disappears build up a little bit of equity and it disappears with a business or an asset as a relationship analogy everything you do like every good experience you have every memory you create is is accumulating mm-hmm. that you are generating equity is that your analogy? I, I think so I wrote this note in August so <laughs> I can't even remember my analogy now I, I, totally, I, totally, get, I totally get I totally get what you mean that it, well, it's it's <laughs> Is it a single use? You explained use... it much better. You are the accountant. So. <laughs> is it a single use transactional kind of thing? Exactly. That's purely for the fleeting sense of enjoyment you get exactly. while you're there. Versus. So that's interesting because we we talked about this in a in a, a private WhatsApp in a circle thread mm-hmm. the other day, which was <clears throat> that these these serial experiences may have value of their own. They may mm-hmm. not, but the overarching value could be that they are to give you enough experience to prepare you for being able to discriminate and pick a better mate long term mm-hmm. or to give you enough experience enough width of experience to know if you're in a good or a bad position later I, on I think what what's interesting about what you were talking about we'll come back to the point about this game of chicken of trying to find someone before they get taken so to speak mm. um, what's interesting there is the point that I made again in, in the chat that we were on about where I said I don't know if I want to be the first round 
for a 22-year-old, 23-year-old <clears throat> rocket who is going to be a fantastic wife later in life, As in you, but needs to go through a divorce. So I, you, you, you don't want to be a learning experience <laughs> yeah. for someone. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, I think, maybe not a divorce. You understand I, what I mean, I, though? I, I, completely. I think people who end up marrying the person, they, the first person they slept with, for example, mm-hmm. I think that's a, a recipe for disaster. That's Pers- like, personally. That's like putting all your money into a single stock and just... But if the, the other thing as well is, if you don't know what you're missing... Ignorance, ignorance so, can so be that, bliss. that would be fine if we didn't live in a very sexualized society where it, there's hints of what you're missing everywhere. Good point. So like, I think it's more than a it's... hint. <laughs> like, <laughs> have I? So I've got. Is little... everyone's trying to signal there constantly? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to steal a little bit of content from Brett Weinstein, Heather Haying, and Joe Rogan here, but I don't think either of you two have listened to the podcast. So it's going to be quite interesting for the listeners at home. I'm going to do a little experiment. So, oh God. can you both imagine for me, please? A woman who is beautiful, yeah, but not hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a nineteenth century with a little no currently bow and, okay. Woman who's beautiful but not hot, okay. just by our understandings of those. What, however, definitions. you want to interpret it, beautiful but not hot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got that in your mind? <sighs> yeah. No. I'm, just, I'm honestly it's, struggling. It's I, kind I'll of, persist. Okay. Okay. Continue. So, can you now imagine someone who's hot but not beautiful? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. The argument that Heather Haying and Brett Weinstein make on Joe Rogan's podcast is that men's men's uh, values that they're looking for in women have become skewed mm-hmm. to work on hotness and not beauty. Mm-hmm. And beauty is timeless, and it's the sort of thing that continues throughout life. So a good example would be someone like Dame Judi Dench or something like that, you know, someone mm-hmm. who's got some beauty, some grace about her. Mm-hmm but you don't think it's hot. Mm-hmm. Hot but not beautiful would be tarty girl yep. who you want to have sex with, but you wouldn't take home to the parents. I think that downhill from that, or downstream from that, should I say, there's other implications about the way that they hold themselves, the values that they hold, etc., etc. Mm. But even if you just take it on the surface level about the way that they look, there is definitely a distinction to be made between beauty and hotness. Mm. And yep. what's happening with a lot of <clears throat> beauty products now, oil of ole and... Whatever else it is, I don't know. I'm just thinking about what's in my mum's drawer. Um, <laughs> That's a very mum product. Yeah, I know, yeah. What, what do girls use? Because Clarins. You, no, you know I what? That, that also betrays your age because it used to be called Oil of Yule and then they changed it to Ole. Just like they changed Jif to Sif. That's because loads of like, Spanish people couldn't pronounce it, wasn't it? I think it, meant, it means like Willy in Swedish or something. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. From the Swedish sales. So, yeah, the beauty and hotness scale is something that's really interesting. And what they're saying is that beauty products are um, signaling for hotness and not beauty. Mm. And this is confusing men's sort of radar and compass in terms of what they're looking for as well. Because you really want to be looking for beauty, not hotness. If hotness is going to wane within the next five to ten years, and this is the same for is that because it's easier to emulate hotness than it is to emulate beauty? I think there's more depth to beauty for sure. And also feels like... Painted on the so surface, it it's, it? it's, yeah. well. it's a lot more flashy lights, neon sort of stuff, mm-hmm. and less subtle. And the other thing as well that's kind of savage. It's easy enough to get a tan and Botox and like just all the like um, stuff that if you looked at someone from a distance, mm-hmm. just for a flash, you'd be like, oh yeah. But yeah what, what's so interesting? If you think of like FHM cover model, for example, mm-hmm. or like you know what I mean, nuts and zoo and all that. And I realize that magazine. doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but yeah. So like the the women portrayed it's on such that. Such a granddad when we're talking about this. That's the <laughs> most oh, recent example. Oh, and nuts magazine. But they, what I what I always used to find so interesting is like someone has arranged that image in a way that they know guys look at that and find whatever that arrangement like whatever they're wearing in that way attractive. Mm. But like a lot of it, like if you saw someone walking down the street like that, you'd be like that's ridiculous. Mm. But it's like the combination of certain colors and items of clothing mm-hmm. that they know just the hotness hit. triggering right I'd love to see a machine learning algorithm come to a conclusion just, did you see just to turn people on and yeah, watch it, and see what, what it did you read at? the mm. post that I put in the inner circle yesterday about the snapchat filters and how they affect yeah mm. did you read it no <laughs> I did video man did, did you, you? Yeah. did you enjoy it did you yeah, so I suppose that's as close to a machine learning algorithm as we're going to get, yeah. which is the... Can you explain it to me? Because I haven't read it. Snapchat adjusts your facial features based on um, these archetypes of attractiveness to, like, smoothen out the face, make the cheeks slightly redder, make the eyes slightly larger, um, 
it doesn't make this forehead a bit larger as well. Um, right. Basically make you have more of a neotenous, which means like baby-like face. Right. Um, okay. So like, you know, the, the filter that has like the floating hair. Yeah, another one. You do. <clears throat> I see. So that's, that's doing certain things that are... Makes the lips a bit bigger, a bit pinker. Right. There's this Fisherian runaway selection, which is uh, sexually attractive characteristics will become more exaggerated over time. So oh, if yeah, and it gets ridiculous. It gets it? absolutely ridiculous. It becomes caricatured. <laughs> so you go, okay, men like women with big boobs or uh, women like men with broad shoulders. Run that for a million years <laughs> and you've got these triangular men and these women with like scoliosis yeah, upon birth. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so moving on. What's next in your framework? Christ. Should we go, I want to do, um, how do you form a good relationship? So we've hopefully managed to get people out of the mire that is seeing someone mm. they found someone that they think i could i could see myself in a relationship with this person well so so i suppose picking that person and knowing whether they are a good choice and i i owe um johnny a huge amount for there was a time a few years ago a good few years ago i now, optimized your tinder you yeah you did <laughs> funnel. A time a good few years funnel. ago when, anyone wants a funnel. when um i was i was quite torn and Johnny just advised me to make a balanced scorecard um, of a couple of people that I was considering pursuing for a relationship. And he was like, look, like rank them out, rank them across five attributes, mark it out of 10 and pick and give them each a rating on each of those attributes, take the total and see which one has more points. How do you feel? How do you feel that a lot of people who would think you just know the you just know camp of man, you feel it when it's right. How do you think they would react to your? I think there's probably some overlap between quantifiable metrics. I I think back then I'd overridden my 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 heart center, my feeling center so much. I think that's a good point. That I was out of tune with that intuitive sense. How do you feel? How do you feel now with regards to stuff like that? Much better. Much better, but that, that's from a lot of spiritual practice that I've done. I think that's connected me now. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Inside, but that's for another, mm-hmm. yeah, another time. Johnny, how about you? How, think, do, how do you find or choose a person that's right for you in a relationship? Um, so I didn't, I didn't plot it out like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. but that approach. Excel, really? Not Excel. <laughs> Excel. But, so, but, but with that, like in response to that thing, that that point of like, oh, you shouldn't approach it like that. Like that's like saying, like you know, someone saying, oh, I'm just, I know, I'm saving money. Or I know I'm losing weight. Mm. Or, you know, I know I'm not breaking the speed limit. Mm -hmm. Like You might be. You might be, but you might also not be. And also, like, if you know, if you know that you feel more strongly about that person, but you're struggling to make a decision between one or three relationships or whatever you want to get into, Mm -hmm. like, sometimes sitting and actually thinking about it can... Do you not think a lot of of relationships, a lot of what makes relationships special and attractive are due to the intangibles? So these are intangibles. How do you tangibize them? So, like... (laughs) Well, pr- by using the framework. <laughs> like, We're all so... <laughs> the fact that any of us have had sex... Is impressive. A we're fucking doing well. miracle. Yeah. yeah, we're doing well. So I, the stuff that I think is more important, the stuff I've I, written I down here... I haven't yet. When, when will yeah. it be my turn? Video can... Dean can <laughs> cut that out. Video can cut that out. I know you call you video. Video Dean. Um, so I said, <laughs> Good if Dean didn't exist and it was just a, a two-dimensional <laughs> image of him, like a gif. <laughs> I think we should make a like a, a video man Dean represent like a little character. Once we hit fifty dollars of ad revenue on YouTube, fifty dollars. I'm, I'm going to spend it. I'm going to spend it on. I'm going to spend it on animating Dean. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even asked Dean's consent about this. It's it's fine. Fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to. Right. Let's move on. Um, so, the things that I find are important. Uh, so defining your interests and values, but not in like, oh, I think you should be honest. And I, you know, cause I like that bollocks personally. So things like, what do you like doing on a Friday evening? Um, and what's your daily life going to look like yeah. in that relationship? How do you feel about certain personality <clears throat> traits? How, like, how do you feel about like, um, so something that bothers me is when people back out at last minute, for example, like having common interests and like, common feelings. That's a really like that. good point actually. Cause sometimes what you like, you might have someone who's like, oh, I want a guy with a six pack and they have no interest in training that they're, they're out of shape. And then if they find someone and they actually find that their interests aren't aligned and what they would do on a week to week basis is completely mm. different or 
then they feel like they've had to be brought into the gym and it's a place that they don't like. But or even that, so like, so I've I've actually found being in a relationship with someone who likes the gym not as good mm-hmm. personally because that because then you then have to the gym beforehand before the relationship was your time. Yep. And suddenly it yeah. becomes not your time. And I, like, I think there are definitely benefits to having that, but I like the gym to be, I go and people criticize me for this, but I go headphones in, like it's my time to, to just do that. Typical powerlifter. And, yeah, and typical powerlifter. Well, and, I, and always I mean, has I been. commonly get that I wanted to speak to Johnny, but I saw him in the gym and I was scared. Yeah. Mm. Got stuff to do. Rest in bitch face. <laughs> I've got this rest, I've got this rest period to do. Show me, show me one person face. who's doing a heavy deadlift session who wants to sit and talk between sets. You. I don't want it well. Only if it's through your airpods while deadlifting. Ideally. And only about something very important. So do you think that having common interests with your partner is important? Because Darren and his wife, as a good example, Mm. have got, they overlap in some areas, but Colleen does like wreath making Mm. and stuff, like loads of things that don't overlap. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and you're saying that having interests that overlap is good, but that going to the gym together and so having what fitness I, ones. What I was trying to say. So something I said at the, at, for um, relationships versus single, which is that um, the pros of being single are only pros if you're in the wrong relationship. Apart from obviously sleeping with lots of people, it, but I suppose it still depends. Why on did the you gesture at me when you did that? I didn't. I gestured in general. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but stuff like. Not having sex with lots of people. <laughs> Holiday destinations, interior design, restaurants, like uh, the type of music you might put on the car, um, where you might go and get some food on a weekend. Stuff like that, I think, is more important than... To, to a lot of people, sorry for interrupting, to a lot of people, that would seem like real low-level, quite surface stuff mm. especially because you at the very beginning of this framework you said doesn't need to be about like loyalty mm. and mm-hmm. you know i just love- what's it i think loyalty is important but not as a stat but i see what you mean <clears throat> I, I think that just because i think the ephemeral nebulous terms of yeah yeah what do you look for on like so i got asked this question loads on love island right mm. like, so what do you look for and what they want is like blonde hair blue eyes or brunette petite sporty goes to the gym mm. um loyal but actually is your answer a bunch of quite existential stuff that they want I, no, no, you know, no, I, I found it really again. I found it really difficult mm. because if you don't have when someone asks you that question what's your type mm. how, and do you, you, how do you if you don't question? have a single and like who it's a mistake. says I go for I, I go for only blondes like, mm. who is enough of a retard <laughs> to think that that's an appropriate answer mm. well one it's, an, it's a very inappropriate answer two it's stupid on on that account but also like it's just you've suddenly restricted arbitrarily the pool of people that you could potentially mm. have met. And then you might meet someone who doesn't fit into your completely arbitrary defined type in your head that would have actually been a really good match for you. Mm. And you've written them off. And, mm. yeah. yeah. Going for values is much better. So anyway, moving forward into a relationship, um, how do you decide when you need, when it's, when it's time and how do you ask someone? To go from seeing to... Mm. Mm-hmm. So I don't think there's an elegant way to do that. I think it's just... Especially at our age. My boyfriend, Because, like, that, that question was acceptable when you're, like, 14. Mm. Yeah. And then now you feel like such a little... Do you know what it comes back to? I think, obviously, throughout all of a relationship, especially towards the end, like, towards the end, once you're in a relationship, it's super important. But this is just identifying how important communication is. Mm. Like, transparent communication. Mm. Jordan Peterson on a recent podcast that I watched talks about him and his wife and he's adamant. I think they've been together maybe 35 years. He's known her since she was eight. Like he's literally lived on the same street as each other in, uh, I think it's Alberta where he's from. And he said that she's never lied to him ever. She, he believes that Tammy, his wife has never, ever once lied to him. You've got to say, as far as he knows, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to say that. Jordan, yeah. there's going to be a caveat in here, mate. Come on, mate, Jordan. It's, it's, only, it's only what you know. Um, but And he believes that she's never, ever lied to him. And you're like, fuck. Mm. That is the basis of a fucking good relationship right there. Mm. Um, Depends how much of a pessimist you are. You'd be like, my wife is such a good liar that I've never <laughs> caught her on it once. But, I mean, if, if that is true and 
he chooses to believe in alternate reality and he's happy. Yeah. True. Okay, yeah. so to to ask someone, do you just why don't you just request it on Facebook, not speak to? Yeah, just write on the wall, girlfriend question mark. You're either going to get a yes or a no, aren't you? That might be the reason for the no. That's the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Something that we went to see Eric Helms in a fitness seminar, and he in in passing in the fitness seminar gave me the best relationship advice I've ever had. Very unromantic, but it was really good advice. Well, just, so I think a lot of people, and I had this thought up until that point, was that, like, you will have this relationship where you're like, I am in love with this person. This is, I need to get married to this person. This is the one. And all those sorts of, like, romantic beliefs that, you know, like Cinderella and all these things that lead us to believe. And he uses this example of he was on an army base where there was over a thousand people, and he knew rationally that there maybe be 50 people that he could have formed a relationship with. His wife happened to be one of those 50 people. And then that sort of fits, like he finds her attractive, gets on with her, etc. And then past that, it just has to be two adults understanding that relationships come with a whole host of shit stuff and problems. And you just have to agree to solve them I in, remember in an he, adult way. He was like, oh, I'm getting married soon. And someone was like, oh, is she the one? He was like, well... I, I, I love her very much, but uh, I, I don't really think there is such thing as the one. I'm, I mean, in, She's okay. in, in in the world right now, there's probably between one and 2,000 people that, that would qualify as, as the one, depending on your, on your geographical uh, overlap. But, you know, she she's definitely one of those one to 2,000 people. So do you, do you believe... Do you Get agree? in. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Do you agree that the best that you can hope for is someone who's good enough? So that's a... That's a difficult question. Good enough is determined by your input as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so, so you, is the best that you can hope for good enough? Because is there any, what is the likelihood that you find the most perfect, perfect person for you on the planet? So, so I, there's two, there's two numbers, isn't there? I'm going to have to It's going to make lots of noise. I'm really sorry. You can't uh, listen so, to the size yeah, 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 of that ass. You're less than a hundred. Oh, you're less than a hundred kilos yet? Not, not quite. Oh, getting close. Sad face. So. Hurtling towards it though. You could meet someone who on their side, they are perfect and they're putting in loads of effort. But if you don't meet them at that, you will end up with a subpar relationship. But and that's you, fine. But <clears> that, that means multiply that, between that, that, that means if they were different, if they were different and were able to um, account for whatever failings or shortcomings or forthcomings it is that you have, that would be fixed. The same way that two mm-hmm. jigsaw pieces put together can make a whole. Mm, so, so it's more like that. Let's say that you you both are a multiplier and you both got up to ten points. So. If you both put in 100% effort and you're both really well compatible, you can get a total of 100. If the person is perfect and they put in the effort, so they've used up their five points of innate character and the other five points of their effort, so they're a 10, and you only put in a three, <laughs> then you're missing out on... Right, but Absolutely. that person, that still doesn't affect what that person is. My question was, do so, you think that the best that you can hope for is someone who's good enough? So I think that has to be a... Minim- Maybe that answers that question. Minim- 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 <laughs> I think what Chris is saying is like you're saying there is quality and there is a magnifier, which is effort and person. Yeah, and you put them together. But, that, but you're, I mean, you you put a I suppose you put a cap on it so it can only go up to ten. But I think Chris is saying like someone could be a seven or a three. Mm-hmm. Someone could be a three with lots of effort or seven. But with you lots could of effort. someone yeah. could be a ten and you could think this is a ten. Oh, actually, I've just met someone who's a twelve. Uh, so it's the, this is the re- this is why you need to have lots of or why you were saying you need to have lots of short experiences when you're young so that you get a- it's also the reason for balance scorecard <laughs> because and so so okay so here, here's the answer to your question so so let's say you appraise people over three things like their personality like a certain aspect of the personality their looks and their job for example and you want those three things to be maxed out as high as possible you're with someone who's eight across all three things you meet someone who's 10 and think that person must be better mm-hmm. More than likely, that person will have at least one downside, but you don't know. Principally, they will have a downside, which is that that person is inherently in higher demand from everybody that they meet, which will lead to a, 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 an inherent downside. So, the more like socially valuable someone is, the more it's so complex, in, isn't it? Because also, yeah. so so, someone you, might appear like a ten from a distance, and then you get into a relationship with them, and you're like, oh, actually. But that's you can have the converse as well. You can have, yeah. And yeah. another thing to consider is, in the rough. An, another thing to consider as well is that when you've got someone who potentially is heavily sought after, mm. let's say that it's someone that you'd think would be intimidating or maybe up themselves, and you actually find out that they're very hungry for a real connection because they keep having these 
What's a men shallow? Who, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Think that they have shallow mm. connection and so on and so forth. I, I think that there's probably too many variables to even define it, but I, I think that the Eric Helms thing is quite nice that it's, there's probably out there right now, even for the people that are the most in love that they can imagine. Mm. If they weren't in love with that person and another person had come along, that person had never existed. They weren't in that situation. Another person came that they could be equally happy with that person. Mm. And the fact that you're separated by not only um, space geographically, but also time. Like mm. Alain de Botton says, we are often, uh, it is likely that we're not, we're never going to meet the p- people who are best created to understand us. Maybe we were born too soon or too late, or maybe we're in the wrong part mm. of the world. Mm. And you're like, it could be someone in a hundred years time that would be absolutely yep. perfect. It might even you. be in the same city, but like how likely is it that you're going to meet every single person? Well, there you go. So why is it, why is it that people continue to get into relationships with people that live on the street? Jordan Peterson's in a relationship mm. with someone that did that. Yeah. Is the location a refining characteristic, which makes someone more appropriate for a relationship or is it just convenience? It's both. Like the, the data shows people, uh, well, I suppose it's skewed by that exactly, but people tend to go for someone who is of a similar, from a similar location, uh, religious views, political views, socioeconomic status, income level, like all of those things seem to match with the, and, and they tend is to Is that because your them. values are derived from those? And it Probably, means that yeah, you're exactly. more likely to have more in common in terms of the way that you view the world. I think that's very likely, isn't it? But also that they are probably the social circles that you are more likely so to There's an availability anyway. bias yeah. here as well. Because you're not going to go and find someone in Bangladesh and marry them unless you happen to be there anyway, in which case, like... Yeah. Is there a so, case for you, if you get to 30 years old like me, just spending two years travelling the globe sampling? I think a lot of people... Yeah, I think that's probably mm. a really good idea. Right, find them off. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you be annoyed? You, so you, you, you know, you were, you were saying, like, if someone is a very desirable person and you're mm. with them that immediately brings down or that immediately throws a spanner in because other people are fawning over them. Would that annoy you if you were with someone who men were constantly trying to pick them up? So I think it depends on your level of self-confidence, but also because that it can be a point of real issue. So I've, I've seen some relationships fall apart because a girl was in a photo with a guy on a night out. The guy's very insecure and it, it just. That's a guy's uh, problem. Not it, it, it completely the guy's problem, but, but, the guy would, as a result, probably be happy with someone who got less attention, mm. which is ridiculous. But, but that's you talking about, again, that's compatibility, someone who's, right? It is, and it's someone who should be working on themselves before getting into a relationship. So you need to know you need to know yourself and you need to know what level of um, notoriety you're prepared to have your, of course, yeah. your partner at. The, the trouble is with all of this, so if we assume there's a, let's say in Newcastle, for any one person, there's 500 people. Mm-hmm. So that like, and then for each one of those people, there's 500 people. Mm-hmm. And we're in a market that is getting smaller and smaller over time because all of those 500 people are trying to find one of their 500 people. Mm -hmm. If you say, I require 888, and actually all that's remaining of the 500 is 100 and one of them is 778, and you go, well, I'm going to wait for a 998, and that person never arrives, then you may only be left with 666. Mm. It sounds an awful lot like... <laughs> because of the market closing up as yeah. well. Yeah. Is. yeah. But then every so often, trades get reopened. Well, so that's... Then, then you then, have to be you ready with, with, the, with the capital available and we, leverage. <laughs> so. The thing is, you, <laughs> what, what the best way to do is to put a buy order in. So that is the Can best way Can you put in a buy order, though? If, yeah. if only you could. Mm, here's the wish. So moving forward <laughs> from using market trading <laughs> to uh, work out, we're in we're in a relationship. You've managed to get yourself into a relationship with someone that you think is not a complete asshole. Um, I think that this particular area, and I am not. Unfortunately, we're now almost outside of my domain of competence. <laughs> I'm aware that that's well, the gonna... second that we step into a relationship <laughs> yeah, like, outside fine. of my domain. I've been in lots of long term relationships, just very unsuccessful ones. Um, so. I think you might even be the best person to answer that then. Like the, you know, you ask the, the guy been, who's been divorced 15 times for marriage advice and people are like, oh, well, that's just stupid, but actually he's didn't. seen the most yeah. mistakes. Well, that's like saying, would you rather ask a successful or a failed entrepreneur for business advice? Because it's the survivorship bias but versus... Well, because the, the, the successful entrepreneur has likely still failed. Uh, see, it's just that yeah. one has only failed and one has failed. In so, so what you want is the guy who's been divorced 15 times but and now is happily married happily for married. the last 10 years. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think one of the most important periods in a relationship is like the first 
four to six weeks. And I'm aware that the precursor to this has already been set up by the time that you've spent before, like the seeing them. So this needs to really be from as soon as you start to spend time with someone. And the framework to apply to this is kind of the same as when you're in court and there's already been a case which has laid out how this should go forward. Okay. If you set a precedent for X situation to occur, that is what this other person will expect as you move forward. Yeah. And then changing it is going to result in some sort of turmoil. Mm. So the way that you should, I think a good way to approach the beginning of a relationship is to set up the first few weeks as perfectly as possible to have everything exactly as you would like and to set the bar incredibly high. So everything's clean, date night's done on time. You greet them as they come in the door. You don't miss out on X, Y, and Z. You treat them, hold them to as high standard as you want them to be held to. You set hard lines in the sand, going back to relationships 101, very, very hard lines in the sand. This is acceptable behavior. This is unacceptable behavior. Because as soon as you concede a behavior which you deem to be unacceptable, you can no longer say it's unacceptable in the future. Mm. Oh, well, mm. you, you already said it was fine. What do you mean? I've yeah. been going out with John. I've been going for coffee with John for ages. You never had a mm. problem with it before. It's like the first time that something happens which makes you feel upset, tell them. And conversely, the first time that something happens that makes you feel nice, makes you feel good, tell them as well. So another Jordan Peterson one here, the same way as training a dog. Like it's exactly mm. what you're doing here. You need to not only punish. We're uh, not that much more advanced than dogs, really. So not we need to, yeah. you need to you need to punish stuff that you deem to be wrong, and you need to reward stuff that you deem to be good, and mm. that will guide your partner towards being the right person for you. And I think this is where it the whole conversation about um, being with someone, uh, finding the right person for you, becomes even more twisted. Mm. Because you can create the person that's perfect for you. I've seen that so much where someone is in a relationship with someone and you can clearly see that they're only seeing a projection of what they want that person to be and they're Mm. not really seeing that person. Do you not think that... Fighting when someone doesn't meet the criteria. Doesn't fit into the the idea of them they have in their head. I think a a good um, characteristic to look for in any potential future partner is someone who's open to change and also keen on personal development. If you get those two things, it's likely that you're going to be able to grow with that person. That Mm -hmm. like, as you want them to improve, they want you to improve. You can hold them to a higher standard, but they don't take it as an insult or a slight against them or some kind of worrisome reason that you're not going to care anymore. And I think setting the tone setting the tone in that kind of a manner make forms a really, really good foundation. It's like if you start off a marathon at running a six minute mile pace or whatever it is, and you continue at that, you're like, okay, well that's my split. I'm going to stay at six minutes. If you start it at 10 minutes, like what's the incentive to speed up or how mm. do you speed up? Very so, important about the desire for growth as well, because then if you are with someone who is a waste man or waste woman and mm. you're growing at this pace and they're staying the same, there's going to be resentment. You might even start to resent that person. But Both ways as well. They'll yeah, probably resent you for making progress. You. And they're just being them. So it's not like you can blame them for not wanting to grow because do you think that there's Do you think that there's a, a typical difference between men and women with regards to how much they're prepared to grow in your experience in relationships? Like you are I've, obviously... I've, I've a, seen it both ways. I've, I've seen where, where the woman is like, really getting her, get, getting her stuff together and like really moving forward with her life. But the guy is like a sort of layabout, occasionally violent and so on. But because of that, because she still loves him, she puts up with it, mm. but then you can see them growing further apart. But, and then the other, obviously the things like kids or whatever holds them together, or even the threat that if you leave, then I'm going to do. Man, the, the, f- the fact that, as a society, we are even to have people fucking cohabit and not tear each other's eyes out on a daily basis is amazing, isn't it? Mm. Like, mm. it's such a minefield. And the fact that we're held in place by social stigma and a little bit of virtue, like, it's, it is really, really impressive. The, the thing that I find amazing is that people 
see their career as like something that requires a lot of work and a lot of time, but a marriage just happens. You know, like, oh, well, I signed that thing and I live with so the person now. I think, I'm looking back at these notes and I think you took my phone one day during relationships. Uh, and you, were like, <laughs> you were like, I need to write some notes here because I've got so many thoughts. Because also you wrote, you put... You, Can I see them? Cause yeah, because... Annoyingly, I was looking for them this morning. I was like, where are they? So you wrote, if you bought one pair of shoes, you would pick carefully. <laughs> and that's, I think that's the point right. that you... So I remember from. what that means now. While you're looking through that, I've got an idea to... Burdens to, were to, benefits. To float with you. Um... So we cancel that from investment. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to mention them in a sec. Um, so there's a there's an idea that I, I heard from this guy. I think it's very reductive. I think it's very simplistic. But he claimed, and I'm sure there is an equivalent for men, but he claimed that women um, can be fall, fall along three different continuums. Continuer. Someone's going to get offended here, aren't they? Yeah, they, they will. But like, it's fine. They, this is, I'm, I'm relaying this guy's idea, like... If we had something that would insult men just as much, I'd use it. I'm sure there, there probably is a, an equivalent model because he, he'll have made it as an upsell. So <laughs> three different um, spectrum. Spectra. Spectri? It's a, Spectra. It's a new Scott, term. Go on. New to pl- for a single, singular. So, um, so you have their views towards men, relationships, and their life. So... For men, they're either tester or investor. So if they're a tester, then they have lots of men orbiting them at one time that they're constantly keeping just kind of at arm's reach and just always testing them. Whereas an investor is a woman that decides on one man and puts all her eggs into that basket and dives in. And so they're usually on one side of that spectrum or another. Mm -hmm. The next one is attitude towards sex, which is either denier or justifier. And this is the same way that they would react to, hey, did you eat that chocolate in the fridge? No, no, I didn't. We're, that's a denier. That's like sex is a naughty subject. And if I'm questioned about it, I'll just deny that it exists and that I have any urges or anything like that. And if they, and they're less likely to cheat on you, but if they do, you're not going to know about it. A justifier is, did you eat that bit of chocolate? Well, yeah, it's just a bit of chocolate. Like, what's the problem? Someone who doesn't see sex as very important is more likely to have sex with you earlier in a relationship, but doesn't consider it to be anything significant or any kind of marker of how much they like you. Um, And they are more likely to cheat on you and you're more likely to know about it. Then you have, so you have justifier and denier. Then you have attitude towards life, realist and idealist. So realist is um, career focused, realizes that they're going to be juggling a lot of stuff and um, doesn't have a kind of very romanticized view of of their life and their career. Idealist is I want to be the princess of my house and I want to have a three bedroom house with a little car and a dog and a driveway. And that, and that's, uh, that's the, the idealist kind of more traditionalistic view of their life. So you have tester investor towards men, realist, uh, uh, justifier denier towards sex, and then realist idealist towards life and career. I've heard you use that before. It's a really cool friend. Not Mark Manson. No, similar guy. I remember you, I remember you talking about I think there's a few I've, of those. I've run it by around. a few a few women trying to see whether like and the, I think the, the tendency is everyone's like, oh well I'm a denier, mm. justifier, whatever but uh, It's but, what you do with that information. And that's the challenge. Is it accurate or is it just random mm. dichotomies that someone's created to mm-hmm. sell yeah. stuff? If it's not pertinent to how someone's gonna behave in a relationship, like it could just be where their principles lie, but if they love you that much that they can compromise all of those things to be whatever it is that you want mm, but would, do you want someone compromising who they are well, that's a good question I think mm. that there are there has to be compromise even, even if it's just to the extent of like because again a lot of arguments that I've observed happen in, in relationships especially like at uni when everyone's a very sort of close environment is just ego overriding and like someone won't it's so easy to just go you know what? I'm sorry. My bad. I'm like, well, it's just not, let go. It's not. It's not that easy at all. Well, easy relative to having a three day argument. But you think that? Why are so many people in three day arguments clinging onto the ego? Was it? Yeah. Okay. So take take this as a lesson. <laughs> just let go of it. Just say sorry. Mm. I think that's you a good. Know, if you're that's adamant, like a really silly yeah. small thing. Well, it, I mean, it, moving on, moving on to that, like. 
I think breakups are the most painful because of pride. Mm. I would honestly go as far as to say that more than half of the pain in most relationships, most breakups from relationships are due to the pride yeah. being hurt because pe- it just triggers so many feelings of worthlessness and self-loathing and it's what I knew. I knew I wasn't good for this person all along or all of that sort of stuff. I think that's the reason that it hurts and that can be shown. There's been a couple of times where I've been sort of with a girl or whatever and then we've split up. I've maybe not by my choosing or maybe we've kind of drifted apart and then I, again, fucking no man's land of seeing someone. You don't really know what's going on. Mm. And you may have a little bit of resentment towards them. But then if they come back and you get to sleep with them one more time, gone, neutralized, absolutely just immediately gone. Because you're like... like, the pain from the breakup. Yeah. Because you're like, had her all along. Don't need to worry. Okay. It's happened at least three times to me. Where I've been like, that breakup's stung a little bit more than I thought it would. I've got some residual resentment, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Get to sleep with them again. Like, what's I worrying about? Because I suppose it damages your... Ego. Like, yeah. Like, am I desirable? Am I not desirable? They're saying I'm not. Like, someone getting rid of something. What do you think? So- like, like, everyone always says, like, they, they want to be able to say, oh, it was mutual. Mm-hmm. If they had a breakup. There's always one wanna- person who pushes it more than the other. Mm. Uh, so what do you think about this statement? The power in a relationship lies with the person who cares the least. It's, it's probably true, but I think a successful relationship shouldn't have to rely on power struggles and mm. um, and games of who cares and who doesn't care. Um, it sh- if, if it's a case of both people putting... Like, the person who suffers the most is definitely the one who cares the most. But... Have you? Can you see any of that? The power in a relationship lies with the person who cares least in, yeah, in well, previous relationships. Well, it's the same. Like in, in, in any negotiation, you will have someone who cares the least and is most able to walk away, and they are going to be the one that has the bargaining power. But I, I, so I, I've, I've definitely experienced that. I think it when it happens, it's when there isn't a shared vision for where it's going. I think like if both. So back to the Eric Helms advice of like it's just problem solving. Like it's just professional problem solving and an issue. Like there's just, you're two people who live together and share a lot of your life together and shit's going to happen. That's like as minor as I was watching that. What are you doing to like, why did you make me feel this way? I really, you know, all these sorts of things. And it's managing someone else's feelings and emotions and helping them understand that how you feel and how, what your emotions are. And if you have a shared, shared view of where things are going, mm-hmm. And that that's an, mm-hmm. a, a future that you both want to be the case. And you won't argue about the small stuff because it's... Because it's like, well, aligned. we're moving in this direction. So I've written in there... Um, or here. No, and in there. That a, that a relationship is like a business. Mm-hmm. And in the same way that, like, Yusuf and I, we're not in a... Rela- well, we are, I suppose we are in a relationship in a way. Um, but I, I, I won't let them ha- have sex with me ever. Um, <laughs> Much to my... <laughs> he keeps trying. But the point is, is that, like, the little stuff is irrelevant because there's a shared view of where the, we'd like the business to go. Communication. So, yeah. And so, but I think if, if someone, let's say that Yusuf didn't give a shit and I really cared, mm. then the arguments are just going to mm. erupt. Yeah. So we've kind of jumped ahead to the um, breakup thing. Cause I think we can probably get away with a full episode on breakups. <laughs> so I want to shelve that for now. How Talk do about you think as well? Mm. Yeah. How do you, um, after the honeymoon period of a relationship drops off, mm. where do you go from there? Like, have you got a framework for how you keep? That's a million dollar question, isn't it? I think that's. You've like... got a fairly successful long term relationship, yeah, and you use a fairly successful framework for it as well. So we're asking you. Well, for the I love of God, can you give us a framework. You've got a fucking girlfriend. I think. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's so the answer is unfortunately deadlifts of three hundred kilos and over. <laughs> <laughs> Very low. Everyone's like, seventy-five oh, percent oh, or greater leg to body volume. That's it. That is it. Come on. So, it, why are you like so long? So I wish I knew. Yeah. I might just sell the answer. Just quit. Quit, and I'll tell you. Come on. <laughs> Ebook. Um, you get physical delivery. 
<laughs> Quid plus post. I'm just ringing. Chris is getting upset. Um, so I think, I, personally, I feel the, um, and I don't feel like I've created it. I feel like it's just happened. But the relationships that I see that are just in utter turmoil all the time. Tatters. Are, pardon? Tatters. Tatters, Tatters yeah. Tatters, yeah. Bits are when, like, one of the one of the relationship, like the the man or the woman, just wants to stay in all the time, or just wants to go out all the or time. Or the man, or the man, or the man, or the man. Or sorry, the woman, sorry, or the, or the woman. woman. <laughs> Two people in a relationship, or the non-binary, or the, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the or person, them, them the, and them, the other kin. Um, <laughs> so I think they, are, one of them is forcing the other person to live their life with them, and the other person wants to see their friends or wants to do something else without them for a while. And that creates arguments and problems. And I think, to me, a, a successful long-term relationship is two people sharing their life in tandem. Mm-hmm. And each of them have stuff that they do, like separate, separate groups Interest of friends. and, yeah. Yeah, but it's there's a lot of shared time, but doing something else isn't a deal breaker. So I think that that's the whole thing of like, I don't, it, like, you don't make me whole, I make me whole, and then we come together and yeah. do, yeah. Will Smith is big on this. Okay. Listen to Will Smith's opinion Will, on relationships. Will, the, the Fresh Prince of Will Bel-Air. Smith. Will, the <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Is, he's just started up a pretty successful YouTube channel. He is, has honestly, he, he has endless, he's a endless wise wisdom. Man. Video yes. guy, video guy Dean has VMD. a, has a stiffy over Will Smith's video content. You okay, Dean? So, so, so turgid he can see his face in the reflection. Mm. He has just had to leave, actually. Yeah. He's had to crack one out over Will Smith's video content. Yeah. Little doppelganger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... You think that it's a combination of you retaining your own life and your own interests, mm. which gives you that sense of independence and not make you feel too stifled. Such a big forearm. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Big <laughs> vascular forearm. And also having enough time together to maintain that level of contact and That's feel it. like you're progressing together. And stuff like, and it sounds stupid, but like really listening to someone when someone's speaking, making eye contact when they walk in the room, like ask, sitting and asking them, how their day is without being on Facebook at the same time. Um, like, There's the standard, like, women come, like the stereotype, women comes in, hi, darling, you're right. And it's like, guys playing Xbox doesn't look at her, mm-hmm. just like either makes a grunting noise or just. But again, with, again, with that, if you set the tone from the very beginning of your relationship, and again, another Jordan Peterson example here, if you want, if you're as a man, you want to be greeted by your wife as you come through the door, tell her. Mm. I want you to greet me at the door. I want you to kiss me on the cheek and say, how was your day? And then you can go back to whatever you're doing, but I want that to happen. Like mm. if that's a non-negotiable for you, then fine. It, you're not asking someone to set themselves on fire. Mm-hmm. You're asking them to come to the door and say, how was your day? Like, apps, and if you, as a girl, if you don't want to have to wait for longer than two hours for a reply on a message, set that as a rule mm. in the sand. Like frameworks are the way that businesses, the most complex organizations. Like two hours, bloody hell. Um, <laughs> that's that's absolutely inconceivable for you, isn't it? Yeah, but, I, but, like, but, if I manage forty eight hours, I'm like, yes, I'm so <laughs> responsive. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there'll be people listening who are in a relationship now, have felt like they've uh, made too many concessions from mm-hmm. their values, and they're like, is this irrecoverable now? Is there anything? They so can the, do? the answer is always: if you're going to sell it at seven quid an hour. So, so seven twenty, yeah, yeah. So no, 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 obviously not. Don't but, do that. Um, yeah. I think I think that a good <laughs> a good opportunity or a good chance to do that would be to have a reset. So every year for ourselves, me particularly, I know you two aren't quite so big on New Year's resolutions, but I'm massive on them. Mm-hmm. Every year, I reset my own personal values. Me controlling me is a lot easier than me controlling me and a relationship. So having a yearly review for myself and not having one for the relationship seems almost backwards. Mm. Like if you're in a relationship where you feel like you have compromised too much and that things are starting to go astray from where you want it, want them to, or you thought they would or whatever it might be, ask the person like, let, let's sit down and let's, let's talk about the things, everything. So we say this to the boys, perfect example. Our managers get overworked when they're doing club promo, they've got a university degree to juggle with late nights and some long days that we make them work. And I have increasingly encouraged them to come to me as soon as something gets on their tits. Perfect example. Not very long ago, one of the boys had a art dissertation thing in 
And he just had one week where it got a little bit much for him. And he came to me straight away and he's like, man, like I, I just wanted you to know, I just struggled my, with my workload last week. And immediately the pressure release valve just went, Shh, mm. and I was able to shuffle a couple of things around and that was fine. But if he'd left that and the situation had got worse over the space of eight weeks, he'd leave mm. because he'd be like, I can't take this. But and one the, bad the week. The workload would suffer as well. Uh-huh. Everything yeah. would degrade. So I think have a, every six months or every year, like pick a time, but make it Valentine's Day, make it New Year, make it something. Mm. Every single year, have a sit down with your partner. Okay, so what do we think went well this year? What would you change? Like, and go into it openly. This person isn't saying to you, I don't like who you are. Mm. They're saying that we could be better together and I would be happier if you, if you do this. It's not a comment on you as a person. And the fact... If you can do this completely transparently, and uh, as long as you're not saying, like, I, I hate the size of your penis, I wish you had smaller nipples. <laughs> like, it's valid feedback, though. It's it? valid feedback, it's but it may, it may be difficult to swallow. Mm. Um, well, well, the small sh- penis is sh- probably sh- fine, actually, What, what do you do about your, your, your large fried egg nipples? Like, you, and your just, small penis. Yeah. Uh, suffer you, in silence. You make up for it in other areas. I do. I see. Yeah. Kiss them on the cheek if they come through the door. Mm. Fine. Um, <laughs> Burger nips. I just think, yeah, tiny penis. I just think that, that that's a very good advice, though. To to say that is a very good advice. Yeah. It's a very it's a good advice. advice. Yeah. Thank you for being advice on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. the, <laughs> on the yeah, maybe six monthly reviews, and maybe well, definitely do it across the multiple dimensions there's of a, your relationship. There's a guy who speak who's spoken about this, and it was on a podcast. It's not Garrett J. White. No, no, this no, 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 no. <laughs> there's a guy who's like every quarter. I ask my wife to oh to yeah, score me. There is. Who is it? And it's like, he has to have a total and he can like be shit. It's someone, it's someone we both follow. Be shit with kids for a bit. But if it was because he was on loads of business trips oh. and, you know, he's doing a lot for the family in that way, then it's okay for a bit. As long as he's who not shit in two areas, two months and two quarters in a row. That's all right. But yeah, that's who cool. is that? Well, anyway, I, I think, but, so, but like, one thing to, to go back, to go back to what we're talking about generally, I, I'm going to guess that there might be some people at home that are thinking this sounds like a very unromantic way mm. to operate a relationship. Mm-hmm. But as I've just identified there... But it's like, are you really a romantic? Like, when was the last time you, like, wooed your wife with a rose between your teeth and, like, spun around? Without, it, like... without there being a, a goal or outcome-based decision behind it. Well, that's it. It's just like, inputs and outputs. Yeah. That's the, all the, anything. The, the criticism of that's unromantic. It's the people who say that, I guarantee, are not romantic. They're not realists. And they yeah. weren't They're successful relationships. Mm. And they have it's, what? They won't have successful relationships. Almost, almost certainly. For very long. The idea is, think like an artist, work like an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Have you just come up with that? No, it was someone saying that the great performers or whatever, right. think like artists and work like accountants. Mm. A good point about romanticism as well, like, for a very, very long time in human history, we didn't just have one partner mm. and we didn't marry for love. We married because the person that lived in the farm next door lived in the farm next door. And by convenient. I, yeah, it was mm. a marriage of convenience. It was a marriage for power. It was a, a tool of bureaucracy. It was a tool of uniting or um, stopping wars, uh, uniting mm. kingdoms together, stuff like that. Mm. There was a, this article, is like Aubrey Marcus territory now, isn't it? Where we start mm, to say like I, I th- marriage is only a social thing and we're not... I think, ro- I, think, I think romance in its current form as was created in the Renaissance period can be seen as that. The Romeo and Juliet kind of approach to things, I think it's much more empowering to treat it as a sequence of inputs and outputs because that allows the problem to be first identified and then rectified as opposed to it being, oh, we're we're just not right for each other. Well, no, hang on a second. What the fuck do you mean we're not right for each other? Like, what is not right? Can it be fixed? Mm -hmm. Input, process, output. So I, I fully subscribe to that way of thinking. I just think it's easier for everybody if everybody views it like that. Rather than getting like, because as soon Caught as someone, emotion. as soon as someone gets emotional about all something, these emotions in but, relationships, but, so are like, fucking getting in the way. Two, two, three people, people on the spectrum. Have, have <laughs> <just come out. laughs> Why can't we all just have spreadsheets yeah. for everything? <laughs> Would be a better. World, the Asperger's but, is just tangible in the room, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but like having honest, difficult conversations. If everyone's just willing to do that mm. and laugh and try and come up with solutions to problems. As long as both people are willing to approach it like that, then... Pressure relief valve. Like, it's, it's, it's like, imagine if... This is what I'm saying, like, a relationship's like a business. Imagine if, like, the board of huge companies, just one of them just walked out and went, you know what, this just isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would happen? 
<laughs> like the entire world would fail. But but for it was, some reason, it was so well done. Wasn't it? For it some was reason, like... in a marriage, that's what people think is the solution, even though there is still an outcome focus with two people involved. But like if it, when, but, when, when the Tesla share price dipped 20% and Elon Musk walked out of the boardroom and said he was going to go stay with his mother. I bet his, <laughs> I bet when all that was happening, I imagine he just goes, we need to have a meeting. <laughs> I, I, I bet it's not far off. Because like, there's just no room for, especially when like there's kids, kids involved and, and like there's a fallout of the decision. It is totally irresponsible to get emotional and make rash decisions. Now, I think all of that, again, comes down to fear of communicating. And so, mm. and, and they justify it by hiding behind this, like, oh, well, marriage isn't supposed to be a planned thing because romanticism and everything. And mm-hmm. so, but... Fuck the Renaissance. But at, at every stage, from just meeting someone to seeing someone to starting a relationship to long-term perpetuating a relationship, all of the gaps come from, even though they're different problems at each stage, mm-hmm. come from poor communication. 100%. And being afraid of saying something that might offend someone. Or hearing the answer. Or, or, yeah, hearing the truth. Yeah. Everyone should learn the basics of selling. Judo. Judo and selling. <laughs> judo? Why judo? Why judo? What are you going to do? You I can't mean, like, flip your wife. So, so weird, weirdly... You're like, not even allowed to perform any strikes. It has to only be <laughs> a, a grappling. <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> well, if you leave a bruise. Like, I, I don't think I disagree. Yeah. It was just a weird thing to say. <laughs> what did yeah, you say? Yeah. Selling. Selling. Yeah. What are you selling? That's it, because you have to combine judo with one other thing. So like judo and selling to be a... So this was going to be a, a life hack, was everyone should learn the basics of marketing and sales. Because like in a relationship, you have to put across your view and, and try and bring someone else's view in line with yours. And both people have to try and do that. And if both people understand how emotion gets in the way and how things can be removed to, to arrive at a decision... Much I think it's difficult and I, this has happened sometimes with me in a relationship when I've been um, discussing an issue mm. if you're particularly good at selling or you there is the whole time yeah yeah well that's why everyone should learn but, the basics of selling <laughs> but, but the, pro- the problem with that is that it doesn't the fact that someone says yes in the moment mm. doesn't actually mean that that's what's right because they've been like you've sold someone onto a program that it wasn't it wasn't a good well, fit. Right for them. And they're like they paid the money and they're like, oh, but imagine a world like... where you're both just closing the shit out of each other the whole time. <laughs> they're just constantly <laughs> <laughs> like fuck, I didn't want this. Like so you again. got the upsell, you got the yeah, and you're on loads of subscriptions you didn't sign up to. <laughs> yeah. I think I just I, it is it's, no, I know, it's I know, true. I know like it's I difficult you if you if you're able to box someone up in a discussion mm. and your partner isn't a contender for you with regards to how they're able to articulate themselves or hold themselves in the debate or even just stand their own ground. If they're mm. a little bit more, if they're more conscientious mm. or, um, agreeable. more agreeable, sorry. Yeah. Um, put them on a cold calling course. <laughs> so just in, immunize them against you, <laughs> you trying to sell them on stuff. Well, uh, so I, I think more what I was trying to get at was like, you very quickly become immune to, to shit, difficult conversations. How often should I have sex? As often as you want. How often should you have sex in a relationship minimum? So I like I, I know like everyone's different and you've got to match your libido with your partner, but I, I reckon any less than once a week, then things are starting to I agree. I think the only exception is you're living that together is stuff that. like I don't know. Like you're away or Well obviously like well <clears throat> you have, there has to be we're three or t- very really autistic people. Long penis that you can just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or when those and headsets really up their game. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So once but a week, yeah. once a week, you need to have sex with your partner. Mm. And I think like, and I don't think there's a problem with scheduling it in as well. That's another so, thing. There's a taboo. Yeah. I want, I want to hear you tell the story about when the reminder came upon your phone. I, I, I don't think I can. No. <laughs> I've, I've already put my foot in it at the very start of this podcast. <laughs> Do you not believe it? I hope, well then, don't I hope, say. Have you bleeps out the location and the name of it's the? It's fine. Um, the, I think I think it has to be, it has to be a, a priority, right? Yeah. Because uh, like, like, especially, I, I mean, I don't know, but I imagine as soon as you have kids, and as soon as there's like gets in the way. loads of shit to do, mm-hmm. and it's easy to just get like bumped to the bottom of a to do list. However, frequency is one element of it, but I think with these six monthly reviews or, or quarterly reviews, mm. you need to assess quality as well, because there's, there's no point having lots of bad sex. 
with your partner. When no one comes. It's just ineffective yeah. training, isn't it? <laughs> when no one... Just time no, it's, no one orgasms. Time, time and attention. But yeah, exactly. It's, so there's it's, no gains. No one's so making any like, gains. Everyone's... Just vagina and It's one of those things that, yeah, it's uncomfortable to talk about that stuff, especially like out... But, but I mean, it has to be done away from a bedroom. It's only... It's and only uncomfortable. Why? Because if, if it's in the moment, people are always... People oh, are oh I see. I, th- I thought you meant the, just the room. Discuss, <laughs> Not, dis- yeah. discuss the finer points of how shit I am in, in bed during, during sex. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, the, no one's going to... Don't, gonna don't put that you. there. Stop pinching that. Yeah. <laughs> Why is your hand... Get off me. Yeah. Uh, 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 mm-hmm. Who are you? Yeah. Um, and something that... Top tip for anyone that's wanting to reignite oh, um, something like that in their relationship is to look into Tantra. Because it's a great way to... Build intimacy, but also connection with, with like physical connection with your partner by breathing together and. So we try um, and direct energy around your body. Yeah, you can do. I, you I do, think a, like, you do a thing where so you didn't move for ages. Yeah, so there's exercises where you, you sit opposite each other, chest to chest, and you just breathe. Together no, for I like mean, 10, 15 minutes. It was, it was during sex. You can do it during sex as well. So it's like and you didn't there's move? a range of exercises. Yeah, is, there a, is there a, like a 12 week program? Uh, there's a couple of. Uh, I'll. I'll give Video Guy Dean a couple of videos to put in the links in the show notes. What if what if you spend so much time inside the other person without moving that you become fused together? That's a, fused. that's a major problem. Fused. Can that happen? Surely <laughs> fucking not. <laughs> so um, like things coagulate, I imagine. Get... But but the the exercise. How long do you need to be inside of the other person for? Without you, you're moving? getting ahead of yourself. All, all, all of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because, Shut up, Chris. <laughs> because if you read, if if you try and do tantra by doing that first, you're just going to end up having normal sex, having a really nor- slowly having a normal sex. Yeah, the, whole, did the, the, the did purpose the of tantra is to breathe together and circulate your energy between yourselves when the, when there is no when the sexual um, arousal is low, so that you can then bring that into your normal. Well, sex so it's as a taper well. period. Yeah. So so David Dada way of the superior man has a book and then he has a series of exercises that you can do guided Isn't with your partner. They are audio programs. Obviously your partner has to be a bit open to doing weird stuff, but it's um, not that weird. It's not, yeah, you're going to put a like, duck in the arse, are you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, we don't that, know Chris, that's, that's cause that's we're number, getting ahead of ourselves. That's we are getting ahead of seven. Duck up ass. Is that what it says? Yeah. It's like duck, duck in ass. Take duck your ass. partner's hand. And put a duck <laughs> up their arse. Um, so I think, Weekly reminder, nail the bird. Weekly reminder, nail the bird. Review the quality and frequency. Problem with that. It needs to be a shared calendar. Oh, uh, yeah. I can. If it's just your that, reminder. Well, that's another top tip for relationships, to be honest. Shared, shared calendar. calendar. Shared calendar. So shared useful. calendar is actually we, I mean, great. Today's podcast was scheduled on a shared calendar, except mm. none of us put it in. So then I put it in, like, today. And all of us were late. And just we varying late. degrees. I was on time. You weren't. You were late. It's more on time than you two. That's true. Um, less late. Mm. So any parting thought? I'm just thinking about where we'll go from here. So the next one, we'll probably do breakups and cheating. Oh, it's going to be thorny. Juicy. It's going to be thorny. And mm. then we need to do um, single life. Lead, gen, lead oh, gen. Right, like right, pure lead on. gen and pick up. We'll need a whiteboard. We're like, what's we'll, single life? Yeah. yeah. We'll need a whiteboard and... I've got. Diagram I have up. got. We'll need to get a lot. Well, I've machine. got. I've got the framework right of why you need to get off Tinder and get on Instagram. Yeah. So that's it. I'd love to see if you can make that framework accessible to people with under fifty thousand followers. Yeah. So that's easily. it. easily how Fine. how to use Instagram instead of Tinder, even if you haven't been on TV. That's what it should be called. <laughs> Peace, please. <laughs> Twice. We're going to have to review some of the lovely questions that you guys have sent as well. Please. Yeah, had so, had so many sent in, but the most requested episode was Relationships 102, so that's exactly what Here we've already is. done. Um, any parting thoughts on relationships as you move forward? I mean, none of us are married, none of us have been married. It just so all unintentionally comes back to communication. Like, that wasn't the goal, that wasn't, like, the, the secret. Um, it's the, it's a common theme things. throughout everything, though, right? Mm-hmm. I think work on making yourself the the best possible companion is the only thing that's really in your control. Like obviously getting into relationships and all that sort of stuff can be, can be influenced. But like, if you, there was some, someone, I read something early today. What is that guy again? That asked his wife to review him. I, no, I, it's no. going to annoy me. Fuck, it was like, oh, uh, relationships are, end up in, in bits, in tatters <laughs> because people are like, you know, it might've been nims, but, but anyway, People are just not ready to be in a relationship personally, emotionally, and they then just put all of that stuff, stuff on yeah. that person. 
and so if you're like if you're wondering why you're in a series of failed relationships or your relationship shit look at yourself look at yourself first well John Peterson says that like if you're attracted if um, there's multiple women and all of them keep rejecting you guess who the problem is Mm. it's not the women it's you it's a big pride big ball of pride to swallow though isn't it yeah it's like a well people don't want people don't want to concede the fact that there's something up with them Mm. like duck a duck a duck up up them something (laughs) up them not not quack quack you didn't mean duck no quack quack duck right Uh, any parting thoughts I think next time let's do why relationships fail because there's a we've covered about 10 models there Mm -hmm. of failing relationships we didn't dive into them fully Mm -hmm. so 10 reasons why relationships fail maybe give them part of advice haven't haven't been uh, nailing the bird on a seven day cycle that's why they all fail yeah every single one because you got rid of a smartphone Oh God! That'll come up on the next one. Um, Communication, and it is—it's just a theme, isn't it? Throughout all of this, you got two people in relationship who are invested with each other, and 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 are too afraid to speak to each other. (laughs) It's—it's an insane. Any surprise? Yeah. Thanks. K Biden. K Biden. Get away! Get off!